part of Australia. It's operated by a hobbyist. His name is David Harold, and he is a retiree who actually is very interested in this and has become a bit of an expert. The second one is in Sanford Valley. It's called the Sanford Valley Observatory. It's outside of Brisbane. And here you see it on his telescope tracking down. And the person who operates this, again, a hobbyist, his name is Jonathan Bradshaw. And he has his telescope right by his house, he tells us. And there you see that one. The telescope that we will be relying most on is called the Jinjin Observatory. And it is near the area, the town of Perth. It's about an hour out of Perth. And it is on the western side. And there you see it. This is actually a live image from Jinjin right now. It's just an hour north of Perth. And we will be talking to the folks there. Now, the person operating the telescope right now is Rick Tonello. Uh, Paul Woods is also there. He's their IT guy. And later on, in just a few moments, we'll be speaking to Arielle Heary. She is the part-time astronomer, and she also happens to be a primary school teacher. And all of these people have been extremely helpful today. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Jet Propulsion Lab's Near Earth Objects Program. The goal is to find the large asteroids and comets that have any potential of hitting Earth. Don Yeomans is the manager of the NEO office, and he gives us now this DA-14 reality check. Asteroid 2012 DA-14 is an object about half the size of a football field in diameter that is going to pass very close to the Earth on February 15th. Coming from the south to the north, it actually gets to within 17,200 miles of the Earth's surface and will pass interior to the geosynchronous satellites and the GPS satellites. But there's really no chance of the asteroid hitting the Earth and very little chance it will hit a satellite. Although this object gets very close to the Earth on February 15th, it's fairly small as asteroids go and it won't be observable with a naked eye, but if you happen to be located in Eastern Europe, Asia, Australia, and you know where to look, and you have a pair of binoculars, it will indeed be visible. The asteroid was discovered by a group of uh, Spanish astronomers in La Sagra Observatory in, in southern Spain. An object uh, the size of DA-14 actually impacted the Earth on June 30th, 1908, the so-called Tunguska event. An object of about 30 or 40 meters came down into the Earth's atmosphere and exploded, uh, leveling trees for 820 square miles. The close approach of this, this object, 2012 DA-14, on February 15th is nothing to worry about. Its orbit is very well known. We know exactly where it's going to go, and it cannot hit the Earth. 20 years ago, we probably wouldn't have found this object, uh, but now NASA is observing the skies nightly and uh, picking up these objects, and we track them in for 100 years into the future and see if any of them make uh, interesting close Earth approaches, not only because of the threat issue, but because these objects are important for science, they're important for future resources, uh, as well as uh, threats. Well, right now I am joined by Paul Chodas. He's a scientist in NASA's Near Earth Objects Office. And Paul, we probably have to address right off the top this meteor that hit Russia overnight. What an exciting day. We have, we, we feel like it's like in a shooting gallery here. We have two rare events of Near Earth Objects approaching the Earth on the same day. What can you tell us about this? Anything at this point? First of all, the two events are unrelated. The uh, the meteor over Siberia and over Russia was not related to the, to the asteroid uh, 2012 DA, which we are still tracking. You have a live shot of it. And they're not in the same trajectory, the same orbit. It's simply a coincidence that they happen to hit and come near the Earth the same day. How big was this meteor? The meteor, we think, was around 15 meters in size, which is about one-third the size of DA-14 itself. Okay, so it's much smaller. Much smaller, and you can see what sort of destruction um, and uh, shock wave that a smaller uh, asteroid can produce. It's like Mother Nature is showing us what a small one, a tiny one, really can do. And DA-14 is really only a small asteroid on, on that scale. So, 
making it clear again, these two are not related. Not related, right. At all. So let's talk about the Near Earth Objects Office. How do you find asteroids and comets? How do you track them? Finding asteroids and tracking them is a worldwide effort, and it, NASA is the lead agency that coordinates the efforts. Um, around the world, I think we have a, a, um, an example, the images taken by observatories really are showing the position of each of the asteroid against the star background. The astronomers report the positions, like latitude, longitude, only it's on the sky, report the positions to the Minor Planet Center, another NASA-funded facility in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which serves as a clearinghouse for all observatories around the world. Then we take the data from them. They, they help us by computing a preliminary orbit. We take that data and compute a, a very precise orbit and then analyze the possible um, impact probabilities into the future. We go 100 years into the future and we're analyzing the future motion of these objects. So DA14 was spotted by an observatory in Spain. Yes, it was uh, a, an amateur group, a very sophisticated amateur group. That's the red dot there showing where their observatory is. Um, and they have, they have state-of-the-art equipment to find these things. NASA also has many surveys, and I might add that NASA-funded surveys have found um, about 95% of the near-Earth objects. You see the blue dots here indicating the major NASA observatories. There's also uh, another one, a survey telescope in Maui. Well, let's look at our asteroid right now on the Jinjin Observatory shot. Can we cut to that right now? Um, you can see it right there. Can you describe to us, you see the streaking, is mm -hmm. this a movement of the telescope at this point? Is that? Well, first of all, it's, it's just amazing how bright the asteroid is coming. A little guy like this, only 45 meters in diameter, 150 feet, half the size of a football field, and yet it's now accessible to many telescopes around the world of only moderate size. It's, it, the reason it's streaked, first of all, you can see how fast it's moving, and the reason it streaks is that there are little time exposures taken of it, and it actually moves during the time exposure. Well, we have Ariel Heary, who's at the observatory right now. She is on the phone. Ariel, are you there? Hi. Hi, Ariel. Ariel, we Hi, just chatted a, a little bit earlier. Are people excited over there? Very much so. There's a lot of interest in it. Um, Rick on his own has done, I think, in the last probably half hour, about five interviews for different things. We've had newspapers, um, schools, it's big in the schools. We had the public in today earlier on this evening, and we did a talk on it then. So it, it's very big over here. So can you describe to us what you're seeing? Clear skies, I guess, because we, we see a very good image. Very clear skies. It's, a, it's an amazingly fantastic night. It, the Milky Way is so clear you could almost touch it. Uh, and the weather is perfect. It's about 22 degrees at the moment. So it's a very, very good evening for um, doing what we're doing at the moment. So it is about 3 o'clock in the morning there, and how long will you be watching it today? Um, yeah, it's about 3 o'clock in the morning here, and Rick picked up the asteroid about 1.30, and we've not taken our eyes off the screen ever since. And Rick hasn't moved from his spot because we don't want to lose it. Oh, no. Can you, can you see it in a small telescope? Can you see it in binoculars? It seems to be amazingly bright. Yes, such a small we can object. see it with binoculars. You can see it in a small telescope. Um, Grant, who's another astronomer here, has actually attached his camera to the, one of the telescopes, and he's taking a lot of images that he's going to put together in a slow-mo at the end of it. And um, we've got another telescope up as well that you could see it in. So we have viewers all over the world, but in your neck of the woods, what part of the sky are you looking at? We are looking at... Rick? Which part of the sky are we looking at right now? I imagine this thing is moving so fast that you have to look it up on the table Crater. to find out where you are right now. It's moving so quickly. So it's... It is, I, I, we've just looked up and it's um, in the crater area. Crater, the Constellation Crater. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Well, Ariel, thank you so much. We will be coming back to your shot throughout the program, and thank you for bringing it to us. Have a great day out there. You're welcome. Thank All you right. very much.
All right, so that is Ariel Harry, and she is at the Jinjin Observatory, and they are the folks that are bringing us the shot, this best shot that That's we amazing. can get. And again, so much of this is dependent upon observers who are hobbyists, and Ariel is a part-time astronomer, and she's a school teacher. That's your day job. So let's take a look at where we are right now. Uh, the asteroid is about 17,500 miles away, 515 miles away. Closest approach, it appears to be closer to uh, you know, 25 minutes past the hour. Mm -hmm. And the vis visualization you see right there, that computer simulation, is something that we've developed here at JPL. It's a visualization tool we've been cutting to throughout today. It's called Eyes on the Solar System. And the tool uses data on DA14 and allows us to track it in near real time. And Kevin Hussey is the manager of the visualization technology. And he is here to demonstrate how you at home can use it and follow along. Kevin? Thank you, Gay. I, I am going to show you how you can, by going to this website, do everything I'm going to show you and recreate the simulation that you saw on the screen. So what appears to be a, a view of the solar system from above, looks like a textbook drawing, is actually models of the solar system and trajectories of our spacecraft and planets inside of a game engine. You can use your mouse and I'm now going to click and drag my mouse and you can see that I'm changing the position of the camera so it looks like I'm flying about our solar system. Anything that has a label is clickable. So before we get to DA14, I have a minute here, I'm going to take you out to Saturn and we're going to look for another one of our missions that's currently active. There's the Cassini mission. Again, if you click on a label, we will take you to that spacecraft and if you were at Cassini, this is how it, Saturn would appear to you at this time. Alright, I'm going to take us back home 